Ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest challenge Christianity is facing in Ebola land today. Because people are thinking that anything that works is right. Including in Christianity, all sorts of abuses and aberrations, whether they are with sacramentals or with selective teaching, so long as it works, they think it is right. No. No. And that is where I have reservations about Siento technical rationality. Because the Siento technical rationality as an approach comforts me, but as the ultimate response, no. And here, I will appeal to the authority, not of a theologian, but a scientist. Perhaps you are familiar with the writings of Conrad Zacharias Lawrence, the Austrian Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine, who was an ethnologist and a zoologist. It was both. He was even specialist in the life of birds. In his book, King Solomon's Ring, which is a funny translation of a book titled in German, I think, Er redete mit Vieren, Vögel und, I think, Kuhn, something like that. Somebody who spoke with birds and fish and, 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 and cattle. That is the title, but is it the King Solomon's Ring? Because it was believed that that ring gave Solomon the power to understand the life of the animals. Now, this man argues. I will only give a summary of one particular argument. That instinct provides every living thing with the means not only of self-preservation, but also of the conservation of the species. And he says that dogs don't kill dogs because instinct prevents them from doing that. All those animals in which the instinct does not prevent them from destroying one another, Nature prevents them from possibility of escape. And he gives an example. We all think that wolves are wild. But if a wolf sees a fellow wolf and they are about to fight, once the situation gets heated up, one of them will bow, bend down, and turn the part of its neck that exposes the vein that supplies the brain to the greater one. That other wolf cannot bite there. Instinct prevents him from killing it because he has surrendered. The dove, which we all regard as the symbol of peace, he says, if you lock two doves in one box and go away, come back after three hours, one of them is dead. Why? It will keep picking at the weaker one until it dies. Why are doves not killing one another? Flight. Nature has given them the possibility of flight. So it is not possible for a dove to attack the other because the other one will keep flying and that fight will not lead to death. And he says, in the human being, on the other hand, it is hardly possible for an individual to kill the other person using physical hand. It's more difficult. What helps the other human being to kill the other is the use of instruments. And since intelligence has allowed the human being to develop in instruments, the human being has continued to perfect instruments that it will use to kill the other until the point of extinction. And Conrad states, that only religion and morality can tame the excesses of the human being in his capacity to destroy one another. And I will also refer to Henri Bergson, the author of Evolution Creatrice. By the way, scholars of African philosophy here who attribute to placid temples the idea of a lamb vital 
vital force that is the basis of African philosophy, there is no such thing. Because Elan Vital was first used by a French philosopher and then popularized by a Belgian priest with a smattering knowledge of philosophy and theology. There is nothing specifically African about that. Henri, Henri Bergson says in his book, The Two Sources of Morality and Religion, that religion, that the human intellect has the capacity of leading to the development of the human being to the point of self-destruction. Or leading to the point where the human being anticipates problems he does not have to the point that he despairs and he will be suicidal and nihilistic. So he says that religion is man's response to a feeling of helplessness in the face of the absolute powers of the intellect. This scientotechnical rationality needs another moderating force. And I'll tell you why, and I'll sit down. The reason is, scientotechnical rationality is capable of producing many things, including things that are not useful. Secondly, on its own, Shiento technical rationality cannot practice self-criticism. Because you would arrive at scientism whereby whatever science and technology are capable of producing will be morally and socially useful or even expedient or usable. Scientifically possible would mean morally right. And this would lead to self-annihilation by the human being. So I think this, the only thing that we say, if science makes this impossible, why is it not right? I don't think science in itself is in a position to answer that question. Yeah, philosophy, maybe, yes. And then, of course, religious belief, because always it makes it possible that there is another sphere of meaning beyond the one we are living in. And Viktor Frankl, permit me to land on the familiar ground. He was a neurologist and a psychotherapist. He said he used to tell his students, to ask them, we conduct experiments with animals, and sometimes these experiments can be painful. But we do that for the sake also of improving on medical treatment of human beings. And he asked them, do you think the animals understand that there is another sphere of meaning beyond the one within which we are torturing them? They say no. And then he answers, then it is not science to rule out among us the possibility of another sphere of meaning that is not amenable to scientific observation and experimentation. Thank you. Thank you.